is a type 3 muscle fiber. Now, like I said in the last video, if you present your body with a particular type of stimulus, it's going to give you a response. If you do it, if you give it a, a stimulus from one end of the spectrum, let's call it, call this the speed strength end of the spectrum, it's going to respond by getting faster and stronger. If you present it with a stimulus from this end of the spectrum, let's call it endurance and fat burning, then it's going to respond in a like fashion. Well, let's say what we want to do in order to produce, and I'm going to show you what this all means in a moment, the type 3 super biologically superior muscle fiber is to present it with both ends of the spectrum within the same periodized program. And that's exactly what we'll talk about in the next video. So, let's talk about the way that your muscle fibers produce energy or how they work. So there are two things that really drive your entire body. There are your hormones and there's your nervous system. Your hormones is a more or, or a more primal form of, uh, of our ability to, to do what we have to do. Um, and the nervous system is a little bit more complex. The hormones are a little bit slower in producing a response and the nervous system is a lot faster because it's like electricity in producing a response. So both of them are essential, both of them do different things and so what we want to do is we want to um, increase the efficiency of both hormones and nervous system in the muscle fiber. So if you can imagine you've got nerve or motor units. These are basically nerve endings come stemming from your peripheral nervous system or they are your peripheral nervous system coming from your brain stem and your brain, which is your central nervous system. It all kind of branches out into the muscles. So that's what you've got here. You call each one of these tendrils a, a, a motor unit. So this is a motor unit. And what happens is as your, you, your brain tells your body what it wants to do, it sends a message just like a, a, you flip on a light switch and the lights turn on. Well, the same thing is you, your brain tells your body, boom, I want you to do something. I'm moving my arms right now. It's like, this is what's happening. My brain's saying, move your freaking elbow. That's it. So it's real simple. It happens instantly. And the more efficient that part of the muscle gets, the stronger you become. That's why, uh, you know, a lot of power lifters will say that they've got like a CNS fatigue. They're burning out their nervous system because powerlifting is a sport of strength. And you're, you, they're really not burning out their muscles too much. They're, they're very rarely will they be really sore, like a bodybuilder sore. But they'll be fatigued and tired and burnt out because the nervous system is just shooting so much energy, so much, so much electricity to the muscle to produce strength that you burn out the nervous system. And then these little dudes here are mitochondria. And they're basically the powerhouses of the of the muscle. They work a lot slower. They produce enzymes that break down all types of chemicals from your food and stuff in order to produce long-term energy, your ability to keep on going. So if you can imagine, motor units, let's go now. Mitochondria, let's keep going. If that all makes sense. So you can imagine that if you've got your type 2 and your type 1 muscle fibers or the two ends of that spectrum that I described earlier, you've got some muscle fibers that are really high in mitochondria. Those are going to be your type 1 muscle fibers. And then you've got those that are really just kicking with the electricity. Those are going to be your type 2 muscle fibers, the ones that are really tied to the nervous system that strength athletes tend to develop. And the other end of the spectrum, endurance type athletes have tons of mitochondria in their, in their muscle. So what we want to do is, and what I'm going to describe in a, the next video or the next segment, is we want to increase both the mitochondrial density in the tissue as well as building or I'm not even sure correct me you can let me know if I'm right or wrong I don't know if we could build more motor units but we can increase the efficiency of the nervous response in the motor units to the muscle and the way we do that is we produce stimulus ie exercise programs that force this to happen more mitochondria if we keep doing the type of things that we do in the hybrid training that I'm going to describe to you later, your body responds by producing more of these mitochondria. And that way it can continue to go on and on and on and on and on. It produces that endurance or that longevity 
that we described earlier. And when we also, to the same muscle within the same time frame, this is very important and I'll talk more about it later, but basically within the same week or the same workout, we really drive it home with some power and strength moves, we increase the efficiency, the, the neural drive. If you could just imagine like, uh, with electricity, there's like voltage. You know, we increase the amount of voltage that's being shot from your central nervous system into the muscle. And I mean, you can really increase that a lot. I, heard, I once heard that the human nervous system has enough energy in it to light the city of San Francisco for like a week. That's pretty incredible. So we have that within us. Let's increase the efficiency of it by having it drive to the tissue in a more efficient manner. So if you're wondering what a superior or biologically superior muscle fiber is or a type three muscle fiber, it's not some mutant muscle fiber that I created in a Petri dish. <laughs> it's simply a muscle fiber that has responded to the type of training that I'm going to describe in the next video by increasing mitochondria for its ability to have endurance and increasing the neural adaptation so that it can continue to be strong and build hypertrophy. I hope that helps. I'll see you in the next video.